Welcome to the College Football Survivor Show, where playoff survival is always on the line. Here's Shahan J. Haraja and Babak Hayeri. The final college football playoff committee ranking is here. Hello, everybody. This is the College Football Survivor Show, where we go into the season's contenders for the college football playoff. I'm Bob Akairi. As always, I'm joined by Shehan Jayaraja, national college football writer for CBS Sports. You can find us on X at CFB Survivor Show, where you can participate in polls and communicate with us. But let's get to the poll. The final committee ranking, pardon me, just came out. The top six are Michigan, Washington, Texas, and Alabama. That is your college football playoff slate. The first two out, well, the first one out, number five, Florida State, a perfect 13-0 in the ACC, followed by the Georgia Bulldogs at 12-1, having just lost the SEC title game to Alabama. Shehan, I know you've got thoughts on this. I'll let you lead off. Yeah, so just to round it out, like you mentioned, Georgia number one, Washington number two, Texas moves up to number three, by the way, from number seven, a four spot jump. Uh, And at number four, we have the Alabama Crimson Tide. And look, I think that when you look back at history, the college football playoff committee has usually gotten it correct. This is not one of those times. This is a joke. This is a disaster for the sport in a lot of ways. Because look, if you are a power conference team, who by the way, played two SEC teams in the non-conference, crushed LSU, one of the teams that Alabama is getting the most credit for beating, beat Florida, of course. They beat a top 15 Louisville team without their first or second string quarterback by double figures. And at the end of it all, we just decide none of it should matter, that Alabama should get into the field and we should ignore everything else they did this season because they beat Georgia. They lost at home to Texas. And thank God that Texas got in the field, at least in addition to them, because moving them ahead of Texas would have been a joke. But we're going to sit here and talk about the fact that Florida State doesn't look as good without its starting quarterback. Like Alabama didn't need fourth and 31 one week ago. Well, like that didn't happen. Like they didn't play a 17 to three game against South Florida. We can have this whole conversation about, well, you know, uh, I think that Alabama's better. They didn't play better. They lost games. They did not win meaningful games. It's ridiculous to me. And if we're going to say, that Florida State, as a 13-0 Power Conference champion who played two additional Power 5 teams out of conference, played a 10-game Power 5 schedule, including two from the SEC, including a ranked team from the SEC, not counting the 11th game that they played in the conference championship game, if, if we're saying that doesn't matter, then what the committee is actually saying is that Florida State needs to leave the ACC, that we do not consider the ACC to be a Power Conference team because everything else is just made up. You know, I am surprised that the folks at the CFP actually did what Bill Hancock said they were supposed to do, because I actually think this ranking makes sense to me. If you're looking at the best teams, not the most deserving teams, I don't think you're going to have a lot of controversy, in my opinion, to say that Texas and Alabama were better teams than Florida State. If we're looking at the teams that are going to go in the playoff, no one can tell me Florida State was going to be favored against any of the other teams in that top eight. They're just it just wasn't going to happen, and it 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 stinks. I agree to see a team go undefeated and make it through. This is a wonderful segue for next season. But as of right now, and as much as it, I hate taking Jordan Travis's injury against Florida State. This is exactly what the college football playoff committee said they would do. They took the four best teams. Now, Florida State's resume. They did manage to win all their games. And I was looking at, because we don't have the full CFP ranking yet, looking at the AP ranking that came out earlier today, which wasn't all that different than what we saw. I mean, they they kept Florida State ahead of Alabama. What did Florida State do? Yes, it beat LSU with the presumed Heisman, Heisman winner after what we saw in the Pac-12 title game. They beat Louisville in that final game. Unfortunately, the ACC schedule had them miss the ranked NC State team that's also out there. So that wasn't on their resume. They missed Notre Dame, which also wasn't able to be there to build their resume. And when we look at Alabama, they beat obviously currently AP number six and uh, CFP number six, Georgia. They beat an Ole Miss team that's certainly going to be ranked high still. They beat LSU as well, and they beat Tennessee. Their only loss was to the team right above them. 
number three, Texas. And then looking at Texas again, they managed to beat the number five team, Alabama and Oklahoma State. However, there really aren't any other top 25 wins left right now in the AP top 25. And of course, they lost to current, uh, well, AP number 12, Oklahoma. So looking at those two, looking at those three teams, I get why Florida State was left out. I'm actually, it almost feels like a consolation prize was keeping them against, uh, pardon me, keeping them ahead of Georgia. Because if we were really going to extend that all the way out, I'm not even sure how Florida State would have been kept ahead of Georgia in this ranking, other than a recency bias towards the fact that the, the dogs just lost. I actually think the playoff committee, for what they've been saying all of this time, got it right. They picked the four best teams. They didn't pick the four most deserving teams. And Florida State was the poster child for the most deserving team rather than the best team. Here's my question. If Georgia and Michigan were to play tomorrow, who would be favored? You know At the answer. At this point, it's home. You know the answer. I, Michigan impressed me against Iowa. I'm not going to lie. They had 230 yards of offense. 230 yards. They, that is a joke. Michigan would clearly be an underdog. They're probably going to be an underdog against Alabama. They probably would be an underdog against Texas. They probably would, they probably wouldn't be an underdog against Washington. But by the way, Washington was a nine and a half point underdog heading into their title game against Oregon. And it turned out that was garbage. It turned out that wasn't real. Uh, In fact, Is Ohio State worse than all four of the teams that made the field? Would Ohio State beat Alabama? Would Ohio State beat Washington? Would Ohio State beat Texas? I I mean, that is such a cop-out to me. The idea that we should just ignore the actual games that happened because we think in our heads maybe another team would win those games. Maybe if Georgia played Florida State schedule, they'd go 8-4. and We don't know the answer. We only got to see what actually happened. And what actually happened was Florida State played a schedule with three top 25 teams, swept them, even though they lost their starting quarterback, even though they lost their second string quarterback and had to throw in a freshman who had one career pass attempt against an FBS team, they won by double figures against the top 15 opponent. So if none of this matters, I don't understand. If I'm Alabama right now, my message is, oh, I should cancel all of my games for next year because it doesn't matter. We're going to get in anyway. Jahan, you made the case for why, frankly, Georgia and Ohio State might have been better better ranked for being the first two teams out than Florida State. You're but, right. But it's better Georgia than Michigan, too. Ohio State, Georgia and Ohio State, I would certainly expect to be a closer spread, if you want to say a closer chance to beat the top four teams than Florida State. So that's why I think they use the number five spot to just give Florida State a very awkward pat on the back. Like, great job. Nice hustle. Um, sorry, you're not in the top four, but you're right. No, Georgia would absolutely be a, a better team to face any of those teams above them than uh, Florida State would. Same with Georgia. I mean, you could go back and even say Oregon would probably give a better fight, although Washington certainly put their chances to bed last weekend. So it's a tough call, but I think, again, I think we got the four best teams. Um, now, there are some quibbles. I agree. When you have any one-loss teams, the, there's going to be quibbles about which one-loss team is the better one-loss team. And next year, we won't have this kind of a question. But for this year, first of all, I love this. You've heard me this the last couple of weeks of this show. I was kind of rooting for just enough chaos. I didn't care who got left out. I'm surprised it's Florida State just based on history with the College Football Playoff Committee. But this is the perfect setup and the perfect rage machine to get people really buying in the next season when we will probably only have three teams that look really good and then have to fill out the rest. But we'll set that aside. The other thing that we should discuss just a little bit, because I know all the focus is on three and four and who got in and who got left out. But the number one and two teams also got me a little curious, only because we saw what looked like a bit of conflict in what the committee was saying. Because if we're looking at the best teams, between Washington and Michigan. Resume-wise, Washington ultimately was more impressive. With Michigan, they had two teams that they beat in the current AP Top 25, which we're using because we haven't got the full CFP. They beat Ohio State, obviously, and they beat a Top 10 Penn State team. With Washington, they beat what's currently a number eight Oregon team twice. They beat number 14, Arizona, number 21, Oregon State. And although they didn't make it into the final rankings, they beat the Mountain West champ, Boise State. So if we're looking at best team at this point, 
the resume for Washington seems to have pushed whatever questions we have about the program into a spot where I would rank them above Michigan. Yeah, Michigan did handle Iowa, but I, I just frankly am more impressed by what Washington has done. What's your thought on that? Yeah, well, I, I think I have two things, right? So first, Washington's resume is better. I don't even think it's that close. Like you mentioned, two wins over uh, top eight, most likely Oregon. Uh, they have a win over top 15 Arizona. They have a win over top 20 uh, Oregon State. Uh, their resume was pretty difficult. And like you mentioned, uh, you know, a, a win over the, the Mountain West champion as well in Boise State. They had a tough path. I, I mean, they did. They had to play tough games week in and week out. I just want to also, uh, before I forget, I, I, Iowa did finish the top 25 rankings as number 20. So there was a third win for Michigan, and yes. I apologize for not including that. Yeah, and so ultimately, though, uh, the, the resume is not close. They just sort of felt like Michigan was better based off of vibes or something. I, I guess they love uh, you know, teams that put up 230 yards of offense when it's in the Big Ten and not in other conferences anyway. Um here, but let me take you actually to somewhere else. So Bill Connolly at ESPN, obviously one of the great uh, advanced stats people of our time. He has a ranking called the SP plus rankings. And this takes into account performance down to down, drive to drive. It also takes into account some predictive metrics that include, uh, you know, stuff like recruiting ratings and stuff like that. Here is Bill Connolly's top four. And this is meant to be predictive. Okay. Number one, Michigan. Okay, sure. Uh, they were obviously very dominant. They have the number one defense per SP+. Plus. Number two, Georgia. Number three, Ohio State. Number four, Penn State. Well, let's keep going. Number five, Oregon. Number six, Texas. Number seven, Alabama. Number eight, Florida State. Number 11, Washington. So if we just want to take into account predictive metrics, if we just want to take into account who Vegas would favor, well, then the top four should probably be Michigan, Georgia, Ohio State, Penn State, right? See, this is why the BCS, I'm so glad, is no longer here. <laughs> when we used to see the computers spit out poll results and we were kind of like, okay, that that is an interesting thing versus what we're seeing on the field. But um yeah, no, I, I get it. And I think that's why it's nice to have a human committee that looked across all of these teams and said, I think credibly that these are the top four. Now, again, I think the minor quibbles we were just talking about, it was poll inertia that moved Michigan up one and, and uh, or ranking inertia and uh, Washington up one. But when it comes to deciding the rest, I think they got it right just by looking at the teams on the field. Because I was waiting to hear how they were going to defend I mean, we're all waiting to hear how they were going to defend Florida State. Depending, even if even if you thought Florida State deserved to be in the Final Four, we all knew the arguments that were coming. There's no way you could compare them to uh, the current teams that are playing for Texas, Alabama, and even some of the more um, uh, uh, optimistic Georgia fans out there. But given what we saw, I, I I was curious how they were going to defend it. But now we have the reverse. They are literally going to have to explain why the the historical bias of the committee, which was, and I don't even say that in a negative way, but the historical pr plan was to allow an undefeated P5 champion an opportunity to play for the national title. And here in the final year of the, the 14 playoff, they decided, nah, not this year. I cannot wait to see their results for that. I cannot wait. But I am absolutely impressed that they had the uh, the the fortitude to pick the top four teams that were the best teams in the country right now. But I, you keep saying that. I don't know by what metric you are defining these teams as the best four. Because again, we have their schedules. We have what they've done. We have the games they won. We have the games that they lost. Again, we, we can have the, co the conversation about Alabama. You know, uh, actually, Boo Corrigan did go on ESPN. We're, we're doing this like live, by the way. We have not gotten yeah. the chance to go through <laughs> everything. Uh, Boo Corrigan said uh, to ESPN, Florida State is a different team than they were through the first 11 weeks. As you look at who they are as a team right now without Jordan Travis, without the uh, offensive dynamic he brings to the team, they are a different team. So 
What that says to me, one, is that obviously Jordan Travis should win the Heisman Trophy. He's clearly the most valuable player in the history of college football because uh, he took a team that had 85 great scholarship players. And without him, it's only 84 bad players and they don't belong in the playoffs. So clearly he should win the Heisman Trophy and be a first team All-American. I'm I'm sure we all agree with that. Uh, The other part of this, too, is am, am I like am I having a stroke or did Alabama not have fourth and 31 against Auburn? Did did Alabama not only win 17 to three against South Florida? Did Alabama not have a one score game against Arkansas? Like we can talk about Florida state and trying to find their rhythm with their third string quarterback, but we can talk about what Alabama did with their first string quarterback. It happened. It was real. It happened on the field. This wasn't a one week thing with Alabama having trouble against different teams. This is an Alabama team that did not play to an Alabama standard for most of the season. Do they beat LSU if Jaden Daniels doesn't get hurt? Do they beat Auburn without the miracle of all miracles? Do they beat Arkansas if some things don't break right? They they only beat Texas A&M by six points. They fired their coach. Texas A&M said the results that we had against Alabama were so bad, we're firing that dude and paying him $77 million to go away. But none of that matters. None of that matters because Alabama beat Georgia. And so I guess the rest of the season just doesn't have to count. Well, I mean, we could say that for almost all of these games. I mean, only, the only team that seems to have won consistently in a way, in a manner that was domineering was Michigan. And maybe for that reason, they legitimately kept them as number one. Washington certainly had their own foibles. We saw that Arizona State game where the defense was the only reason they won. Um, we've seen plenty of close matches with them, especially you know, we saw Oregon State. We saw that wild Washington State game. Um, Washington State isn't exactly a great team either. And maybe that was just the rivalry weirdness. We, we had that quote I shared a couple of weeks ago about the idea that it isn't rivalry. It, it isn't a championship caliber run if you don't have a near-death experience with your in-state rival. And that's exactly what Alabama had done. Again, we look at Texas. How many of those games did they – now, down the stretch, Texas finally started to look domineering. Iowa State looked good. That was not a, they did not fall asleep in Ames. They did not have a letdown. And then they absolutely crushed Texas Tech. And it again went in and handled Oklahoma State very, very, very well. Um, but we could also look at that weird stretch after the Red River rivalry. Obviously, you can kind of say the Houston game was thrown off a little bit because Quinn Ewers got injured for that game and the team kind of Houston was able to work their way back in. Similarly, we saw TCU give them a bit of a scare. We saw K-State give them a bit of a scare. And we were saying the same thing about Texas. What's going on there? Are they just getting ready to drop one? But they managed to get it together, play a cogent ball game and, and win out quite convincingly in those last three games in Alabama. Yeah, they had that scare against Auburn, but they just knocked off the number one, what the previous number one team on a 29 team, win, probably 29 game winning streak. Back to back national champions. And I know Minnesota 1936, if there's anyone left from that team, are really happy that their, their three peats been defended. But I, I just look at that and I can see why, based on the current what's going on right now with these teams, Florida State. Against Florida, not the strongest Florida Gators team we've ever seen. They were able to get a win. It wasn't a domineering win. And then against a Louisville team that, after losing to Kentucky the previous week, we kind of had to finally just say completely write them off in terms of being a playoff contender. They they struggled. And, and yes, the final score looks a bit bigger than it was, but it was a close game until... So that final quarter, uh, Louisville was able to, to slow them down. Now, we, you're right. We, we shouldn't just say this is the Jordan Travis team. This isn't the entire reason for that team's success. It is absolutely that defense for Florida State has been exactly what's been keeping them games throughout the season. And that is a big strength. But we can say the same thing for many of these other top 10, probably these other top four contenders out there as well. It's a tough match. I mean, that's the thing, too. We Even if Florida State, let's say Florida State had lost we were still going to have some controversy with the other teams that were one losses left out. And what we now have is both happening at the exact same time. Because which one lost teams did you take in? They took in Texas and Alabama. Should Georgia have also been up there? Not sure. But uh, I think, again, as far as taking four conference champions, they picked the four best P5 conference champions at this point. Out of Florida State's 13 games, how many do you think were decided by one score or fewer? They were pretty domineering the entire time. Let's see. They had that overtime game with Clemson. I do remember that. Um, 
And let's see here. They had a close game with Miami, Florida. And we remember that because the committee specifically said, well, it's a rivalry game, an in-state rivalry game. So there you go. And uh, again, the Louisville game, that that final score to me is a little deceiving because that was an awfully close game in the ACC title game last night. So it was three. It, you, you also uh, the, the, the red bandana game at Boston College was the third. So they played three games yeah. this year that were within one score. Alabama played four and also lost a game. So, so five of their 13 games were decided by fewer than plus seven points for Alabama. So when you talk about dominance, Florida State, like you mentioned, has been dominant all year long. Even in their games, their three games without Jordan Travis in the lineup, they win by 10, 9, and, and obviously an FCS opponent. So I don't know. Th- this just feels made up to me. This this feels like it's not based on anything. When you have them uh, beating a Duke defense that was really, really good by 18 points, you have them, like you said, having a competitive game against Miami. But Miami is pretty significantly better than Auburn. I think that we can say that. Clemson on the road, a, a tough place to play, a rivalry game. Uh, they ended up inside of the top 25 to finish the year, and they were able to go in and get that victory. And then again, like... I, We have a common opponent. The way that Florida State and Alabama played LSU are not in the same stratosphere. So again, is it like if if if, for example, like God forbid, let's say that like that Jalen Milrow, uh, you know, stubs his toe tomorrow and is questionable for the playoff. Should we should we kick them out? Because the team that Alabama was without Jalen Milrow in the lineup barely beat South Florida. Like, Like they barely did it. So if a team is that individually based on one player like why why are we treating it different i i don't know and the other part of this too is that when you talk about florida state look their offense was not good last night no nobody's pretending that their offense was good last night with a third string freshman quarterback who had one fbs pass attempt they'd have a month of practice to first of all get tate rodemaker back and they scored 24 points against florida on the road last week with tate rodemaker in the starting lineup uh and they'd also have a month of practice to get Brock Glenn ready. These guys weren't supposed to play. And so, I don't know. I do also, you know, one other thing that I'll say is that I feel like everybody is like, well, to prove that you're worthy of the four spot, you have to be 2014 Ohio State. You have to have a Cardale Jones who comes in and immediately wins all of the games, or otherwise you're proving that you don't deserve to be here. And to me, again, that is ridiculous. They're the only four seed to ever win in the college football playoff. By the way, they're the only Ohio State team to ever win a national title in in the college football playoff era. They're the only Big Ten team to win uh, two playoff games in the college football playoff era. It's just not a compelling case to me. And I want to go back to it because I do think that it matters. How can Florida State take what happened here today as any indication other than that, they are not part of a power league right now. That they I, need to leave the ACC. That it is not good enough. That it's not a real league that they take seriously. This is a commission. Uh, this is a statement from AC Commissioner Jim Phillips. It's unfathomable that Florida State, an undefeated Power Five champion, was left out of the college football playoff. Their exclusion calls into question the selection process and whether the committee's own guidelines were followed, including the significant importance of being an undefeated Power Five conference champion. My heart breaks for the talented FSU student athletes and coaches and fans. They deserve better. College football deserve better. I I saw that exactly that email when it came out. And I my thought on this, well, first of all, two things. I do want to say Florida State going to the semifinal, we would have seen probably Tate Rodemaker. He was day to day. They just decided not to play him yesterday, probably for his own health. And it would have probably been him uh, as a starting quarterback, presumably. So it would not have been. The freshman who Brock Glenn, who had a mess yesterday. And that, again, I'm not saying Glenn's not a good quarterback. It just, you know, threw him into the fire immediately. Um, we'll see how he, he pans out. But going back to FSU, I, for all the tension we had, especially starting in roughly January, February of this year, with FSU going on record in board meetings saying that we are not sure we should be in the ACC anymore. They were citing financial reasons because they were seeing the new deals that the Big Ten and the SEC were going to be having in terms of money they would be losing out on, talking about how a team like Vanderbilt would be getting more money than they would and the value they saw themselves. And, and of course, they weren't the only team thinking that, but they were the teams to say it all out loud. At this point, 
Now, why are you right? Why are they even staying in the ACC? Are we going to get a, an abrupt email sent reply all to all of the conference presidents, commissioners, staff? You know, we're out. Bill us. You know, I mean, I, I'm just waiting to see that right now because the offseason tension in the ACC has now officially gone nuclear. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like. I mean, what's Clemson going to think at this point? What if it had been Clemson? Can you imagine a team that has recently gone on a run of national champ? What if they, if they had the exact same resume as Florida state did right now and they weren't let in. And you certainly can't say it's brand name bias because Clemson and Florida state, Florida state. I mean, no one argues Florida state is a blue blood. Florida state has proven itself time after time to be a quality team. So seeing them left out, the ACC has a real crisis on their hands because the teams that were thinking of leaving, this is going to be the moment where they, they might not even wait for an invite. They might just start breaking apart and hoping that one of the two big five or probably the two big two are going to, to let them in. Um, it'll be fascinating to see how that plays out because that's the committee basically has done that. Did the committee just write a death sentence for the ACC? Did the committee just say, Florida State, why are you even in that conference anymore? It's time to go. I, there was enough motivation in that school, in that fan base to leave the ACC. And I think the college football playoff committee, that group of individuals this morning, literally just wrote the death warrant for the current ACC because there's no reason, there's no purpose for Florida State to stay in unless they have faith that in the 12-team playoff, this would never happen again. I want to go back to something that SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey said yesterday. Uh, during his appearance on ESPN. And he said, look, it's not the real world that the SEC would be left out of the college football playoff. Uh, it's like Sesame Street. Uh, one of these things is not like the other. And here's the issue, though. Every uh, argument for Alabama and Georgia being a different level of team is basically, well, they, they play in the SEC. It's in the SEC. Well, they're playing in the SEC. That's why. Okay, that's a that's a similar argument for Missouri to make the field. That's a similar argument. I mean, they had to go through the SEC. Of course, they had two losses. They had to play in the SEC. It's hard. It's really hard. We have to play in the SEC. It's crazy. None of the arguments were specific to the teams. I mean, even Kirby Smart after the game said, well, you know, look, ask NFL talent evaluators about which teams are the best. And they'll say, well, the University of Georgia is the best. Yeah, that's true. As long as we don't play football games, you have a great case. And again, to me, that is just such an unserious way to look at the sport. It's an uncurious way to look at the sport. If you think that Florida State can't hang with the rest of the teams, the best way to figure that out is to freaking play them. Play them on the field, have an opportunity to do that. And look, now uh, it, it's looking right now uh, that in the Orange Bowl, potentially, I think Brett McMurphy has this, that Florida State's going to play Georgia. Obviously, we don't know whether Keon Coleman's going to play. We don't know if Johnny Wilson's going to play. We don't know if Trey Benson's going to play. Obviously, uh, you know, we're going to have to wait and see what happens at quarterback. Um, oh my gosh, uh, Jordan Travis actually just put out a tweet. Devastated, heartbroken, in so much disbelief right now. I wish my leg broke earlier in the season. So y'all could see this team is so much more than the quarterback. I thought results matter. 13-0, and this roster matches up across any team in those top four rankings. I am so sorry. Go Knowles. What the hell, man? Like, like we're, we're having a 23-year-old kid say, I wish that I broke my leg earlier. What the hell? What have we done to this sport I love? Yeah, that's a you feel bad for him. You feel bad for a lot of folks, players on these teams that were left out, specifically, especially Florida State. And it's a tough situation for them. I just again against Georgia, even if they had all the team, all the players who are currently healthy going back, there's no way that in a, a projected Orange Bowl that Florida State would be favored against the the, the dogs. I think just I, pound for pound. I think we, we have to agree that even in that circumstance. I mean, now I know you talked about this the, you, throughout the season. We've talked about is SEC bias keeping them in this? They had a, a pretty miserable non-conference schedule against teams with pulses, not the SoCon challenge. I mean, against actual teams early this season. I mean, of course, we can say the highlight was uh, Texas defeating Alabama. Um, and now they're both in. So it's kind of moot. But we're looking at, you know, the other what were the other great SEC wins 
Well, Mississippi State had an overtime win against Arizona. That doesn't look all that bad in retrospect. Auburn beat Cal. I mean, we don't have a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of um, wins to point at. And obviously, Florida State knocked off LSU. So we've been saying all this stuff. Well, the Pac-12 seems to be the strongest conference. The SEC does not seem to be the same yet. I look at the AP top 25. So these aren't necessarily the committee legitimizing their picks for the top four. And I look at who made it in and I look at the resumes. And Alabama beat the number six Georgia Bulldogs, number 11 Ole Miss Rebels, LSU as number 13, and Tennessee at number 25. They managed to, to keep in the balls. And those are, those are the AP poll voters who I think generally overall – tend to be a little, they're certainly not trying to legitimize who's in the top four, because if we went with their top four, it would have been the Knowles over the uh, over Alabama. So I look at that, and I have to say, yes, the SEC might not have been as strong as before, but there's still a pretty strong conference, and strong enough than what ultimately we got out of the ACC. Again, as I said before, scheduling quirk there that uh, top 25 NC State never had a chance to play uh, the Knowles. Um, which could have helped them, you know, again, get that extra boost. But sometimes these things, I mean, I, I, I'm literally about to say something that is the worst thing you could say. Sometimes these things just happen. Um, and in the end, I am convinced the best teams were let in to the top four of the college football playoff. But it didn't happen. It was a choice. It was a choice that people made to value one thing over the other. I mean, going back, well, Clemson didn't play in a great ACC in 2016 or 2018. I mean, should those I, I, should we strip those titles? Should we hand them to the SEC? I, I mean, look at the Big Ten this year. The Big Ten was a joke this year outside of the top three. I, I mean, I don't know whether Michigan deserves to be in. They're not the best conference in football. I, I think that actually when you really think about it, we should just put four SEC teams in because they have to play in the SEC. It, it's just such... It gets to an argument about generalities of a conference and not about specifics of a team. It is much easier to say, well, the SEC is the best conference in football. And I want to be clear. I believe that the SEC is the best conference in football. I don't even think there's really an argument that the SEC is the best conference in football. What I will argue is just by playing in the SEC, you deserve to be treated differently than everybody else now it, we can contextualize your path we can uh, you know argue it right but like okay cool alabama beat ole miss instead of louisville like i don't care about that i don't think that those are fundamentally different teams georgia of course is a fundamentally different team but alabama also went one and one against those top end type of teams florida state went 13 and 0 they won all their games they did everything that was asked of them we are saying hypothetically if they had been allowed to play, you know, better teams, well, they probably would lose. Would lose. Sorry, I, I just don't want to say that, and I don't want to make that kind of declaration when we don't know the answer to that question. To me, it's a fundamental, uh, a fundamentally bad thing for the sport. It's a fundamentally unserious thing to do, and ultimately, uh, you know, one, I do worry that the college football playoff just signed the death certificate for the Atlantic coast conference, which, you know, we had this whole thing about being so uh, upset about the fact that the PAC 12 just collapses here. Well, the ACC might just be about to be next out the door. Uh, and the second thing is, whew, I'm really looking forward to the 12 team playoff getting here where you actually have an opportunity to play your way into the college football playoff, where you have the opportunity to play, play your way into playing for a national championship and where these questions can be decided on the field instead of Greg, Greg Sankey on ESPN. You know, it's interesting because you mentioned the 2016 final poll um, when we saw the four teams that went in. And again, we had one undefeated team, which was Alabama, and then Clemson, Ohio State, Washington, which was, again, the last time the Pac-12 made it in. But ultimately, it was easier in those years because we just didn't have this glut of quality teams we just did not have anything like this we did not have three undefeated teams plus a couple of other conference champions with one loss that looked good um and that's unfortunately this was being the final four-year playoff season we happened to also go out with the most awkward situation 2014 was also awkward i do acknowledge that but one of the most awkward situations that the committee's ever faced and someone was gonna get angry today some team was gonna have a very legitimate beef we we were all assuming it was going to be between Texas and Alabama. And lo and behold, Florida State, undefeated, left out, 
we just they, they are the team that was legitimate with legitimate gripes i want to emphasize that but in my opinion we saw the four best teams get picked despite the fact that florida state did everything they could to get in and do things that were not entirely in their control they got left out um due to choices by the college football playoff committee whether they did it right or wrong that's up to people i think they made the right call in terms of making the best teams i think the semifinals are going to do great when people see them once they get over this there's going to be a lot of curiosity to see how these four teams square off against each other and it should be close i, I the thing that's been great about this whole season is one team just has not seemed like the death star rolling through the conference play and go rolling through the the championship games we have four teams out there with a puncher's chance to take it all um can't wait to talk more about this as we head towards the semifinal games next month well at the end of this month <laughs> <laughs> well i'll tell you what we I will say this, okay? I, I won't end just on doom and gloom, even though I think that this is one of the worst things to happen in the history of the sport. Uh, we will oh have God. some good <laughs> matches. No, it's one of the worst. It is. It is. We, we can have this conversation more uh, as we head into December. I think it is one of the worst things to happen to the sport in a very long time. Uh, but I will say, I think Florida State would have been fine. I think that they would have matched up just fine with Michigan. I think that they would have definitely had a chance. I think that having an opportunity to do that, but, but let's, let's take that away. Okay. It's over. We're, we're moving on for right this second. We are going to have two really good matchups. I, I do think that Michigan, Alabama is going to be a heck of a matchup. I do think that uh, we get a rematch by the way of the 2022 Alamo bowl. When, uh, when Washington beat Texas 27 to 20 with, with both Michael Penix and Quinny was playing, of course, in that game. So I am, extremely excited for for those two games i think it'll be good matchups uh i would favor alabama over michigan so we should probably kick out uh michigan out of the field since uh, it's about the four best teams but i do think that we are gonna have some really good games uh the other thing too you know we we again we have some great opportunities as part of the advanced local family to, to have some of our writers on i mean we've got m live we've got al.com we're gonna have some uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun and uh it's not just gonna be me having an aneurysm live on the air for an entire month yeah, I just want to say, so Michigan picked the Rose Bowl. That was the other question we kind of had going there. Well, as the number one team, they get to pick which semifinal they play in. So it's going to be a heck of a final Rose Bowl to include at least one of the traditional uh, Big Ten members. Um, so, yeah, that'll be that'll be a heck of a game. We'll see uh, Washington and uh, Texas play in the Superdome. Um, that'll be, again, another interesting one as well. So. I think we'll go ahead and wrap this one up. I just wanted to thank all of you who listened. We always enjoy having you part of our conversation. What an exciting college football season is heading into the postseason. There's going to be a lot of drama. There's going to be a lot of excitement. We know we're going to hear from you. We encourage you. If you have thoughts on this, shoot us a tweet. Shoot us an idea. We're, you can find us on X and Twitter at CFB Survivor Show. Be sure wherever you hear this to like, rate, and subscribe. It helps people find us. I wanted to thank our producer, Joey Aliberti. I'm Bob Akairi. He's Shehan Jayaraja. You can find his work at cbssports.com. Talk to you again soon. The College Football Survivor Show, where playoff survival is always on the line.